hello. Today is Thursday, December 10th, and we have heard lots and lots of news recently about the COVID-19 vaccination. What we'd like to do today is provide you with as much factual information as we can and also share with you things that we don't know or have not been announced yet. Silver Cross has been notified that we'll receive an allocation of the Pfizer vaccines next week, pending the emergency use authorization, which is being discussed today. So we are gearing up to start our vaccination program and want to give you the facts about it. With me today is Dr. Atul Gupta, our medical director, director of infection prevention, and he'll be talking about the safety and the efficacy of the vaccine. And Frank Butler, who's our administrative director of pharmacy, who's leading the vaccine team here at Silver Cross. So Dr. Gupta, you were on NBC News last night and you said, quote, that you give this vaccine an A plus. Can you elaborate on that? Sure, um, you know, when we talk about vaccines, especially new vaccines, you know, the two main things we're looking at our safety and what we call efficacy, how well the vaccine prevents the disease, it ultimately is the, the, the main reason to get a vaccine. So for this, uh, it's a brand new type of vaccine, but the studies really have been amazing. As far as the safety, the safety profile is excellent. Uh, very, very, very few serious adverse effects. Um, and you know, when they were developing it, we were all hoping that it would be 70 to 75% effective. That would have been great. And the studies show 95% that it prevents coronavirus disease um, after two shots, which is really just so much better than we expected. Yeah. Um, and so that's why we're all very excited about it. So when you say the study, was it a lot of people or was it 10 people? So that's the other thing. You know, they, they studied this in 43,000 people. Right. That's more than, than they studied some vaccines that we currently use routinely every day. So it really was studied in a lot of people. They followed them very closely. And again, great safety and it worked amazingly well. Okay. Um, so what is the vaccine? What does it do to your body? Sure. So the vaccine, it teaches your body's immune system how to recognize a very specific part of the COVID virus. Um, and that's the part that the virus uses to cause infection. So after you get the vaccine, your body's immune system knows how to block that part of the virus. And so that's why it's so effective that you, uh, your immune system will stop the virus from actually infecting you. Okay. So but there's a lot of information out there about I don't know, rumors about the virus. Can you dispel some of the myths that you've heard? Sure, um, I've heard lots of them. Um, one of them uh, that people are, are concerned about uh, reasonably, I think, is uh, if the virus contains any fetal tissue or if it was derived from any fetal cell lines, and it was not. Okay. Um, the, uh, the US uh, uh, Catholic uh, Bishops Association has come out and said that it is morally uh, acceptable to get this vaccine. So that's great news. Um, I've heard people say that the virus can change your DNA. It cannot. There's no way, there's no mechanism by which this vaccine can change your DNA. That can't happen. In addition, it does not contain any egg products, so egg allergy is not a concern. There's no preservatives in the vaccine. Um, and perhaps most importantly, there's no virus in the vaccine. It doesn't contain any live virus. It cannot infect you with COVID, um, and it can't make you sick. Okay, well, let's, let's turn to Frank for a second and ask you some questions about what we're going to be doing here at Silver Cross. And I think what is on a lot of people's mind is, are we making the vaccine mandatory? Uh, I can start out by saying we are not going to make it mandatory. It's going to be optional. However, we strongly encourage getting the vaccine. This is really an opportunity to um, really have something that's changing the whole dynamics of managing COVID. We can prevent infections instead of just trying to treat them. Um, the, author, the other thing I would add is we're getting a supply for the hospital to vaccinate healthcare workers. We don't know how many shipments of vaccine we will get. Um, I've heard stuff about I'll wait till the next vaccine. We don't know that those vaccines will come or be approved. So. This is an opportunity to get something that really can make a difference. We want to strongly encourage everybody to get the vaccine. Okay, thank you. And we've heard a lot about that the, you have to have two doses of the vaccine. Can you explain what does that mean and why? Correct. For this particular vaccine, you do need to get a second dose um, exactly 21 days later. Now there's some fine lines to how far away from that you can go, maybe a couple days, 
but we really want everybody to get it on that 21st day. Um, what that does is with that first dose, you get roughly 53% immunity is what it looks like, but we don't know how long that will last. The study that was done on everybody gave a second dose 21 days later, and that's where we drove the really like the 95% efficacy rates that Dr. Gupta was mentioning. That's really exciting for the success of the vaccine. So we want you to get the first dose. We're gonna get another shipment to treat everybody with their second dose. So you will get that second dose, but it should be done 21 okay. days after the first one. So we know we're getting the second dose, but we don't know about any other future Correct. Um, tests or shipments that we're gonna be getting. Correct. And Frank, you've been working really hard studying the side effects of the vaccine. Can you share with us what you've read and what people might expect to have happen? Sure, overall, it's you have mild side effects to the vaccine. There really hasn't been any severe reactions to that, the vaccine. What people can expect is sort of the things that you would get with flu vaccine, um, a fatigue, headache. Um, the results show that that's right around 50% um, you'll get. It may last for a day or two. You can treat that with, you know, sort of the Tylenols and, and that type of stuff. Um, the other thing is, is really probably the most frequent one is pain at the site. Mm. We've all had other vaccines and it's, <laughs> It's tender, it's not comfortable, but again, it's just you know, part of getting that vaccine. Um, the, what I like to tell people is that's telling you your vaccine's working. Oh. It's not an infection, it's, anything, it's your immune re reaction to getting it, and that's what's gonna drive the high success rate. So it's a little uncomfortable for a couple of days, but it's working. Okay. One of the things we'll be sharing in just a minute is how people can sign up to get the vaccine. And Dr. Gupta, I think you have a recommendation about how people should time it with their work schedule. Sure. Yeah. Well, because of what Frank was saying with the, uh, the side effects um, in some people lasting about 24 hours, you know, we're recommending, if possible, um, to get the vaccine on a day before you have the next day off, just okay. so that you have the data to take it easy at home and recover from the side effects if you do get them. Okay. Well, let's switch gears and talk about the logistics here at Silver. So we think, although let's warn everybody, information is changing on an hourly, if not by the minute basis, but we think we could receive vaccines on Tuesday, which means we would start our vaccination plan on Wednesday morning. Do you wanna go through what will be available? What sure. days and hours? Sure. Um, the current plan, and it, a lot of this is guided through IDPH mm -hmm. and Will County Health Department. Um, but we're sort of on notice that we're expecting vaccine to be delivered to the hospital on Tuesday. Um, it's gonna be refrigerated, which does create some challenges for us logistically. The vaccine's only gonna be good for roughly five days. Um, so we're gonna take it in, refrigerate it, and then we're gonna have clinics set up on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, the process that we're using is our employees and physicians and the staff that are gonna get vaccinated will get a message through Workday. They'll also get a message through uh, their email. And it's gonna be linked to, a link to a site that you can register to schedule your vaccination. We want people to register so we can gauge, you know, how much help we need and we can kind of stagger the appointments and whatnot. Um, part of that process, you'll show up You'll register, there'll be some forms, some additional information uh, to fill out prior to getting the vaccine. We're gonna have people down to, to answer any questions that you may have before the vaccine. Complete that process, then go get your vaccine, um, and then you'll be sent on your way. On your way. Yeah. So let, let's just stress, please watch your home email, those of you who've shared that with us, your workday inbox, and we'll continually update information and send the link to the schedule. What if somebody forgets to schedule and they just walk up to the vaccination, which is gonna be done outside the conference center? Yes, we're gonna be doing it the same place we do our flu vaccines, right outside the conference centers. We're making space there that, so there's appropriate separation and those types of things, but we're trying to keep it in an orderly process. So we do want everybody to register, but. If there's an occasional person who doesn't do that, we don't want you to not get the vaccine. We prefer you come down and we'll try to work you into the schedule. You know, one of the concerns I've heard is who is the information going to be shared with about people who get the vaccine? What's required from the state? 
The, the state um, requires us to send some basic information to a program called iCare. It's their tracking mechanism, and it's a requirement of getting the vaccine that goes to the CDC. I believe they're gonna be using that information just to track general numbers of how many people got the vaccine okay. and whether it was used or wasted. Um, it is a requirement if you're gonna get the vaccine, so that'll be part of the program. Okay, so we don't have, we can't not do that. Correct. We, we must do it's that. It's a requirement. Yeah. Frank, let me ask you another question. When people sign up, can they sign up members of their family? At this point, no. Uh, this particular part of the, the rollout plan that's been um, executed by the government, it's targeted just at healthcare workers. Um, so there will be a point that it does expand outside of healthcare into the general population, but this particular shipment is not um, for that. Let me ask you both first before you conclude. Are mm -hmm. you going to get the vaccine? Absolutely. I'll okay. be getting it next week. How about you, Frank? I'm going to do the same. Yeah, really excited to get it. I think it's a game changer. Okay. Dr. Gupta, we've had many questions about um, women who are childbearing age or who are already pregnant. Should they get the vaccine? So right now we just don't have enough data about the vaccine in pregnancy to make a firm recommendation. Uh, we do know um, that uh, the when they did the studies, that many of the women who participated in the vaccine studies got pregnant afterwards and didn't have any problems from it. Um, but we don't have firm data. They're gathering that data now, and, and we should hope to, to know for sure within the next couple of months. Uh, we do know that getting COVID infection itself increases uh, your risk if you're pregnant, both of more severe disease and some suggestion of preterm labor if you have COVID. So um, we're recommending to women to talk to their obstetricians and make that decision on an individual basis. Okay. There's also been a lot of questions about if I already had COVID, sh should I get a vaccine or can I get a vaccine? So right now what we know is that if you've had COVID in the last 90 days, you uh, almost certainly can't get COVID again within those first 90 days. So right now the vaccine is not recommended for anyone who has documented COVID infection in 90 days. Uh, but then after those 90 days are up, certainly you get the vaccine at that point. Okay. Well, thank you both. I'm just going to summarize. Watch your email for the signups. We will be sending out... Um, the initial signups on Friday, tomorrow, and the initial link. And um, every day we'll have more information as we get the information to share with all of you about the vaccination program. So thank you both very much. You're thank welcome. You.